Hello, this is the Provoke Prawn, here with a wiring guide for the MSI Mag A850GL. This is a modular power supply unit, which I'm going to show you how to set up and wire all the cables that you need that are included in the box and what to do with them, where to plug them in and everything else you need to know. It's worth checking before you do this that you actually have the right power supply for your system. So I'd recommend having a look and making sure that you've got enough wattage for your system. A lot of people fall for this trap buying the wrong power supply unit. But the 850 watt that you're seeing here also includes the 12 volt high power connectors, perfect for NVIDIA's 40 series of graphics cards to ensure you've got good power for that as well as a dedicated cable specifically for it. It's also modular which means you only need to plug in the cables you're going to be using which can keep your system nice and neat and you can see that the power supply end is all nicely labeled so you've got an idea of where to plug things in. Still I'm going to help you because I know it can be confusing and intimidating for new builders or if you've just purchased this and want to get on with it. With the thing unboxed, you'll see these are all the cables that you get. There are some extra cables included, which are Molex that I'm not going to use in this build, so I'm not going to show you those, but I will show you the ones we do need. I want to start with the motherboard power. So this is a 24 pin power supply cable and the two 8 pin CPU power connectors for the motherboard. And you can see that they have CPU marked on them for the CPU ones. And these are eight pin connectors, which are nice and flat. So the good thing about this power supply is it has quite flat cables, which will be really important for this build because the case doesn't have much space at the rear of it. So it's perfect for cable management. The 24 pin power cable is split in two parts at the power supply end and then one thick connector at the other end for your motherboard. Now, obviously these connectors are important to make sure your PC runs as smoothly as possible. You need to make sure the 24 pin power connectors are fully seated and clicked all the way in. If you find your PC doesn't boot for any reason, it could well be this. So we'll plug it into where it's marked ATX 24P on the left bottom side of the power supply unit here. So you can see the split into two parts. So one bit has to plug in the bottom there and then one bit just slightly above it to the left, the smaller part plugs in there. This is a little bit fiddly, this cable, but you will notice there are clips on the connectors. So you need to make sure they're pushed into the holes and then it's fully clicked in and seated into place and ensure that you have a solid connection and everything runs as it should. Now the other connectors you want are the CPU power connectors and on this power supply you can see them are CPU and PCIe. So we want to use the two cables that are included here which have CPU power marked on them. This clearly says CPU. Plug the other end of that into the power supply on the points marked CPU and then those two connectors will go into the motherboard Usually on the top left, if you've got a standard motherboard, and on the motherboard I'm using, which I'll show you in a second, it'll be on the rear left. So this is a different motherboard. This is an ASRock. This is an ATX motherboard, just to demonstrate where they'd normally be. The 24-pin power connector goes on the right-hand side there and plugs in. That's the standard position next to the RAM ports. You'd push it all the way in. I'm showing you this, by the way, outside the case, so you can see the build nice and clearly and the wiring for it. Obviously, you'd install your motherboard and your power supply before plugging these cables in. I just want to demonstrate where they go so you can see it really clearly. Then the two 8-pin CPU power connectors on a standard motherboard go in the top left here. You can see they're marked ATX 12V1 and 12V2. So you just plug them in up the top here. Just click those in. You have to make sure they're pushed all the way in. I often get asked whether you should connect these up. The answer is yes. If you've got them, plug them in. It'll make sure your system gets full power and that you get the best performance out of it. Now, with this MSI Project Zero motherboard, obviously those things are a little bit different. The connectors are all on the rear of the motherboard, so they're hidden away nicely. You'll notice the 24-pin power connector is on the left-hand side now, and the two 8-pin CPU power connectors are on the top right. Those are marked CPU power one and two and then you want to plug all of those in again when you've actually installed the motherboard but here's where they would connect so you can just see it in the process for doing that so you're just plugging those in again making sure the little hooks are in place over where they should be on the ports so you can't plug it in the wrong way around but you do want to make sure they're pushed all the way in and that the little hooks click over the top of the latches that are on there that will then secure those into place and that's the basic logic for powering your motherboard. Now for the other things, we'll look at SSDs, for example. These are two crucial 2.5 inch SSDs which are gonna connect up. For this, we use the SATA cable, which is this long cable here you can see with multiple connectors on it with this L-shaped connector on there. 
Now, it's worth noting that this can be used for a variety of things, and you can connect multiple devices to one cable, because you will see there are multiple connectors on the cable itself. So you plug one end into the power supply unit, and then multiple devices can be plugged into it. So you obviously want to look for the SATA and Molex connectors here, and plug your cable into that part of the power supply unit, and then you can connect up your SSDs. So here we've got some crucial 2.5 inch SSDs, you just plug the power cable into that. Note there's an L shape to it, so you can only plug it in one way around, so you have to make sure you, you've got that connector the right way around so that you can plug it in there. And that will supply the power to the drive, and you'll need a separate cable which will run the data from the drive to your system plugged into the motherboard directly. But you can plug multiple SSDs into this power cable and connect those up fairly easily. And the other thing is it will also control and power other things. So for example, you can use it with a hard disk drive as well. So a 3.5 inch hard disk drive, the traditional platter drives, but it also work with fan controllers, RGB controllers, and other things like that, that might also require power. So this cable is multi-use basically, and you can connect multiple devices to it where most other cables that you're going to be dealing with only have one use case. This can be used with multiple different things. So with it powered, you then take this cable, which is a data cable, and plug it into your motherboard, once everything's in your PC, obviously, and plug that cable in there, and then the other end plugs into each of the drives. So you'd need to have a cable separately for each of the drives, and this will provide the data and that's how you connect up your SSDs and hard disk drives to your system. Next is your GPU. So this is a 4070 Super, which uses the 12 volt high power cable. Now, usually these sorts of graphics cards come with an adapter in the box, which requires multiple eight pin PCIe power connectors. But you can see that you have a port on the graphics card, which has multiple pins on it and two different sorts of pins. This power supply unit makes life a little bit easier because you've got this single connector which you can see is 600 watt and it has the correct pinning on it so you've got the different ports on there where you can connect it at one end of the single connector to the power supply and at the other end directly to the graphics card this means you don't need to use that adapter that comes with your gpu you can just use this cable instead and that will give you the necessary power to power that graphics card and not have to create a hideous mess in your system by using that adapter so instead you get this reasonably nice looking cable which is really easy to plug in you do want to make sure it is fully seated at both ends though both in the power supply and in the graphics card and that there's no bend or pull on the cables in either position, which there shouldn't be in this case because there is plenty of space to be able to plug it in and run the cable through the hole in the case because there's a dedicated hole for it, which I'll show you in a little while. Alternatively, if you're using a different GPU, you have two power cables in here, which are the PCIe power cables. These are the standard 8-pin connectors, which are 6 by 2 They're split in half. You can see that you need to sort of put them back together these are the pigtail ones, though, unfortunately. So you only get two of those with the pigtail connectors on them. So a little bit messier if you're using older GPUs or one from AMD or from Intel, then you won't have that 600 watt power connector. You have to use these instead. And now I'd recommend plugging in all the cables that you're going to use for your power supply before mounting the PSU into the case because it'll make life easier in terms of connecting those things up and making sure you've got everything plugged in. You want to do this now, and then you won't have to worry about it later on. Power supply then seats into the case with the fan facing downwards, because that will then pull cold air from below. There's a hole at the bottom of the case to allow cooling for the power supply unit. And then you have four screws to secure it to the back of the case, which you need to screw in. You can see there's quite a lot of space down there still, so you have got room to hide some of the cables away down there and tidy things up. But the other thing I'd recommend doing once you get to this stage is that you can then run some of the power cables through the cabling channels or at least through those Velcro ties and secure them down a bit. You might also want to think about using more plastic cable ties at this point as well to try and neaten things up. Again, you're going to have a lot of cables running here. I've got the two 8-pin CPU power connectors and the 24-pin power connector running up here across the top and plugging in. Once you've got that sorted, then you install your motherboard. Now this is going to be different depending on the sort of motherboard you're using, the next steps, as in how you wire it in. This is a rear connect motherboard, so the power connectors are gonna be on the back, 
but a standard motherboard obviously we need to run the cables that we've hidden away at the back through to the front and plug in at the front from the various different positions you need to take care with that cable management and how they'd go the 24 pin power cable would come out on the right where those three fans are on the right hand side and then the two eight pin cpu power connectors come through at the top left and you'd plug them in there and then do that now before you install your aio or other systems in there that might block those ports because it'll make your life a lot easier so at the rear we've already tidied up some of the power cables you're going to run those power cables that i showed you earlier on so the two eight pin cpu power connectors for example i'm going to plug those in at the top here notice that there are some gaps at the top where you can hide these and you can see now the benefit of using this power supply because these cables are so small that you can nestle them away quite nicely at the top there where the 24 pin one is a little bit more fiddly however i've seen far worse power supply cables which are often quite a lot thicker than this that could cause you a bit of a headache in this build for the graphics card obviously once you've got the gpu installed if you're using the 40 series like i am then you need to make sure you're not putting any tension on the cable either at the gpu or at the psu end and pulling it in a silly direction for this case is actually a clever hole at the bottom so it's worth paying attention to that see if yours has got the same where you can run the power cable through from the power supply up through the hole there and then towards the gpu which means you haven't got to put any extra tension on it and you can just plug it in nicely and there's also enough distance between the graphics card and the glass of the case that it won't be pressing up against that cable and then potentially causing issues and then you should have your build finalized assuming you've plugged in your ssds and other things as i've shown you earlier on hopefully this has given you some helpful insights into how to set up this power supply unit if you'd like to find out more about the full build in this case then click the link in the description down below i've gone into a lot of depth on this case the aio and other things as well thanks very much for watching appreciate you apologies for the state of my hands during this video i've got kittens recently and they've been attacking me viciously thanks for watching You've made it right to the end of the video, you brilliant legend you. If you've enjoyed it, click that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up, and drop me a comment down below if you've got any questions. If you really enjoyed it, consider joining the channel and see the benefits of doing so. Check out these other videos. You might well find them interesting or useful. And most importantly, have a great life.